Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Drawn to Life. In the last part, we finished off Deadwood and finished off World 2 in total, and now we're in World 3 starting off with Surf Beach. And I gotta say, I do love the World 3 level themes. It, this is nice and relaxing to me. We also now have our Star Shooter, which as we mentioned in the last part, uh, fires a starfish that'll travel forward a little bit, but then it'll start immediately homing in on enemies. And the main reason for that is due to how you control when you're underwater. But first, we need to draw a hammock. Uh, when it came to this one, I was tempted just to do a generic net look, but I ended up actually trying to go for more of a, uh, forget the exact fabric name, but kind of a brown fabric one instead, just because it would stand out a bit more visually. Plus, this is actually <laughs> the only kind of hammock I'm actually familiar with in real life, because uh, one of my family members has something like this, more or less. I still had to do a minor net look, but it ended up coming out a bit better in my eyes. Probably could have shaded a bit more, I think, but it's good enough. Either way, as for how you control underwater, first off, when you enter the water, your momentum is eaten up immediately by the water, and you float down slowly. You press the jump button to wave your arms a little bit, and if you mash it enough, you'll actually start raising at a pretty good rate. Uh, when you're on the sea floor, you still fall, uh, you still walk at more or less a normal speed, but it's when you have to try and jump that your control gets uh, hampered. Hence why they gave you the homing weapon, so you can easily hit enemies that aren't directly on your path. It also helps when there's an enemy directly above you that you can't easily get around. Remember a Bark's crew? Woof woof, I'm a wapo dot. Whoever Bark's is, I need to have a serious talk with what he's telling children to do. Uh, honestly, I like the Star Shooter a lot. It's actually my favorite out of the weapons that your avatar gets to use. I just wish there was a way you could actually bring weapons into earlier or later levels. Because I would have this with me for the rest of the game. Because it still homes in when you're not underwater, which is surprisingly useful. Though if you want to hit things with good accuracy, you might want to face away from the enemy. Water is both going to be a path we take optionally and a path we need to take in a lot of these levels too. Hence why they gave us this thing. Uh, there are going to be some secrets here, but for the most part, actually, when we enter water, we are coming down here because it's the only way to progress. There are quite a few more dead ends in this world than there have been in prior ones. So you need to, well, keep your eyes out. With that said, though, I also love, uh... Like with the space theme in World 2, when you're underwater, a different song plays. And I love this shadowfish. I love this song, rather. I don't love the shadowfish, I barely know the shadowfish. In fact, honestly, the shadowfish are my least favorite enemy in this world because they're the ones that are really annoying. Uh, the first couple aren't so bad, but later on there are more open areas underwater that they have like three or four of them in. And... If you can hide in their little blind spot, which you can't even access until we use a later drawing ability. Uh, hitting them with the Star Shooter isn't entirely accurate. Because the Star Shooter obviously takes some time to pick up its path, and as you can see, it gets stuck on walls. So it can miss enemies still. I don't like the Shadowfish. Even though I love their sprite work. They actually remind me a lot of, uh... This one enemy from Metroid Fusion, the Bonefish, that appears when two X-Parasites from fish fuse together. Or is it one, or wait, no, or is it one X-Parasite fuses with one of the fish enemies? I think that's more accurate to what it actually is. I think they were also in that one water room in Zero Mission. You know, one of the four or five that really matter in Zero Mission. But yeah, honestly, uh... Even though I don't like a lot of this world's levels themselves, partially and uh, mostly in part just due to the fact that I don't like the way you control underwater, I love this world's soundtrack. It's nice and relaxing. I've always loved tropical-themed music. There's a reason I love Chrono Cross's soundtrack so much. Besides, you know, that game just being really, really good. Uh, in terms of what you're looking for when you want to refill your ammo of Starfish in this world, uh, you're looking for two things. Either you're looking straight up for starfish piles when you're underwater, but when you're above water, you're looking for this little bunch of seaweed on the beaches. I'll point out the next one I see, but uh, it's kind of it's the it's probably the ammo that blends in the most to the actual world graphics. And here we need to draw a strand of seaweed that they'll shrink accordingly if needed, which 
while you're standing inside of, the shadowfish cannot see you and thus will not home in on you. This is what I mean, where even if you have a safe spot, it's still rather annoying to hit the seaweed, although I'm actually very proud of the seaweed sprite. <laughs> I probably could have left it alone with just the three shades of green without the fourth, but yeah, there it is. That little thing of seaweed right there is what you want to smash in order to get some more starfish. You see how I walked right past it? That's because I didn't realize that's what it was because I thought it was just a bush. Ah, this game. <laughs> Mind you, again, that's probably the worst example of it because you can usually see the snow mounds in the first world rather easily and Sometimes the leaves in the second world can blend in fairly well, other times they can't, they won't. But in this world, it's just really brutal, and because of that, I actually run low on ammo a lot, because I almost don't notice them a lot of the time. In fact, most of the time, even. Uh, it is still fairly easy to take hits underwater, though, despite the sl slower control and ways to hide. Mostly because your momentum... I. Uh, it's underwater momentum. You take a bit longer to slow down than you would otherwise. And thus, you might take some stupid hits like I do in this, and I admit to that. There's also going to be a couple of split paths in this world that lead to either some more shadow goo, templates, so on and so forth. So make sure you explore most of your options. I don't know why I fired three there. Also, since I'm not looking at it, I gotta say, I also love this world's background. It reminds me of the right way of Kirby, Yoshi's Island, and Mario in general, really. Though I have to wonder, because I don't think they ever do it. Uh, is the Shadow Goo water soluble? Because they never put any of it underwater. And I'm assuming the reason for that is it just can't exist underwater. Hello, you look interesting. Crazy Marks. Crazy Marks is broke out of a cage! Oh, you're one of those kind of characters. Oh, lord. Admittedly, I kind of laughed when I not only at first saw that, I remember laughing at that when I was a kid, but I also, when I was recording this, just remember breaking out laughing because I forgot how sudden he just starts yelling like that. He actually always kind of reminded me of the uh, really crappy George of the Jungle cartoon that Cartoon Network had in... Oh, uh, that may have been 2009, 2010, somewhere in there. I'm actually going to look that up. Because that show is just... Bad, but I remember there being a character that talked like that, even though I might be thinking of another show when it came to that. And given how many shows I watched as a kid, yeah, it's likely. Cartoon Network George of the Jungle? 2007? Oh, well, you know, that may be why I'm associating it with that. It's the same goddamn year. Oh, goddamn. I only had two seasons. Huh. Figured I would have had more given some of the stuff on Cartoon Network back then. God, that was a decade ago? Hot diggity damn. Sometimes you just kind of realize when things happen. You just kind of sit back and you, I think the, the image I merely think of when I'm th saying what I'm about to say, it, it just makes you feel older. It reminds me of that clip from the first Santa Claus movie with Tim Allen where he's looking in the mirror after he's shaved and the beard just grows right back in. Not a very good effect, but it, 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 it's funny. Which, mind you, I find Santa Claus very entertaining on the whole, so... Santa Claus 2 as well. Santa Claus 3 was kinda... Not bad. It had a lot of good in it, but it just meandered a bit. Either way, time for us to draw our next object. What the hell is that outline? A coconut radio. Okay. Uh, this was one of the ones I had to weirdly think about in content, because I ha obviously had to have the main coconut and a little antenna there in the top right, but I have no idea what they actually want you to put in the top left. I assume they want you to put a radio dish, which is what I'm putting in right now, but that might be one of the weirder things they have you draw. No, oh, yeah, I guess I need a little speaker. As for what the coconut radio does, when you tap on it, it starts playing music that will distract most small enemies like the Bakis. Uh, the guys that are in the water and such will be completely immune to this. And the distraction does end after about maybe 10, 15 seconds. Though it might be closer to 8 now that I think about it. But it leaves basically enemies that are uh, afflicted by it as open season for you to get combos off of and get some extra money. Or you can just walk right past them like I do because at this point I have more than enough money. Because given the money that's basically impossible to avoid in your path anyway, I have more than enough to get all the ability token upgrades, and that's all I need from the shop. And here's our last Raposa. 
Another member of Barks crew. Crazy Barks is the best. He disturbs me in the weirdest way. Considering he taught a little girl to be a dog, yeah, that's suspicious, to say the least. Uh, now, something I'm not entirely clear about when it comes to the seaweed is whether or not the hitbox that hides you from the shadowfish goes across the entire group of seaweed, or if the hitbox is just bigger than the actual seaweed itself, and thus you're just like sometimes in between two overlapping hitboxes. I can definitely say for a fact there are times where you think you're inside the hitbox and you're outside of it, like the first uh, group of seaweed. Because I was to the far right of it, even though I was just like two inches away from a wall, I was technically outside of its hitbox. Or I guess it's effect box more accurately because it doesn't hurt you. Which uh, I can understand happening in a game like this. You're, you might have, given the way that the drawings work in this game, you're obviously going to have some hitbox dissonance, but still. Yeah, see, you can still hit them. Also, that's the slide. It's useless. I got it anyway, but out of the abilities you get from the shop, it's probably my least favorite because you don't slide forward enough to really make it worth using. Uh, if it was something maybe closer to Mega Man's slide in distance, that would be a bit more useful. Maybe half that, maybe. But as it is, it's not too good. Uh, there, The other two abilities that we're going to get for our avatars we go through, though, are much more useful alongside the flip, which is already really useful depending on where you are. Also, I think this is the first time we've seen a Baki pile. Uh, essentially, it takes three hits to kill instead of one, because it's one to knock them down, then one for each of them. Uh, although I do like- I, I love the little happy faces they have when they're in the pile. It's so goddamn cute. Mind you, like I've said, this game is just adorable. Uh, I, this is not a good situation to be in at all. Oh, how did I get out of that? I should not have gotten out of that. I should be dead. Of course, they can make a dumb mistake like that anyway. If I recall the stage design, though, we are getting close to the end of the stage. We still have one more section, but uh, it's one of those set piece sections where they give you one last tool to kind of mess around with. So I'll see what that is when we get to it. For right now, we're just going to activate that radio to just kind of get rid of any enemies that's in our way and head on over. And now we need to draw our last thing, a surfboard. This one, I believe, I also partially based off something my brother showed me back when he was trying to get me into some sporty stuff. Uh, which, yeah, that, that's basically it. Kept the top green and added a shadow to the little, I forget the name of the thing on the bottom of the surfboard. I, I'm not a surfer. And now we can get onto it. The surfboard, you actually control yourself. You can dip it up or down. You can also jump with it to try and get some extra air and get some extra coins. But otherwise, as long as you just stay on the water's edge, you're basically good. I don't think there's anything really major along the way for you to collect, so you don't really have to worry about much. Although I do recommend trying to get the jumps, because I think you get a bit more money out of it like that. But really, there's nothing useful to it. It's just a nice little set piece. And that's also the end of the level! See, that was in a short section, wasn't it? On the whole, the first level... I'm not a fan of the underwater controls, which is gonna be a problem throughout the entire world, obviously, but they do enough interesting with the items we make, in the first level at least, that I like it enough. And that's another group of Raposa uh, found, another group of secrets found, and more goo cleaned from the world. What do you think is the texture of the shadow goo? I, I, I'm thinking it's something like those weird slime toys that were popular in like 2000. I think I've made a resurgence recently. Oh boy. Hi, Heather. Crazy Box is back! Oh, thank God he didn't talk too much. Hi, Heather. Jammed to the coconut radio, hit binds of seaweed. What are you doing? I don't get that movement. I don't understand, Heather. Either way, let's just head on over to the mayor because of well, all we get to see him deal with the crazy barks, which is probably going to be very interesting. Is that leaf glued to your head? Crazy box? Box is back! We're gonna go sit on a rock! Bark, bark! Okay, I didn't understand any of that. 
But as long as you don't cause any trouble... Crazy Marks will be on his rock! I'll be okay on his rock, rather. Sorry, I messed up your clearly important dialogue. And Bartleby, you found something fun for the beach? Let me place the page back in the Book of Life. Mm, there we go, just like before. Now it's up to the creator to draw us on a beach ball in parasol. How incredibly plain. But yeah, we just have to draw a beach ball in parasol. I went as generic as I could with these, because honestly, I don't care enough about the beach myself to really think of unique designs for it. A uh, generic white and red pattern that you've seen basically in every show ever, alternating between the two. Did add a bit of metal to it just so it actually has some texture to it and added some good enough shading. Uh, the ball I actually had a lot of fun shading though because I had to think carefully about where the light would be going and where the actual colors would be going. So that was fun, I guess. Everyone ran up to the beach. I'm sure they're having fun with the new toys. Mari should be helping me with chores around Village Hall. Could you go find her? She's probably still exploring the northern parts of the village. Well, that's still not too much of the village to explore, so that shouldn't be too hard to find. I mean, she's like, what, the one so far, I think, female NPC that's entirely unique aside from Heather? Actually, that might be true, now that I think about it. Mari, she said the beach was getting too crowded and walked off. Actually, yeah, holy crap, I think that's actually true so far. She's the only unique NPC aside from Heather that's female. Huh. Weird. Bartleby, everyone heard about the beach. Now it's too crowded. Hey, do you think the creator could clear the darkness over this cove? Then we can keep this beach a secret. Uh, okay, sure, let's tap on the eternal flame because walking over here would take too long. It's around this point that I am actually starting to jump cut back to the eternal flame more often than not. Because it could take a while to walk back here at this point. Enough that I probably won't have anything to talk about over at least. Oh, that's a nice little cove, ain't it? Nice and relaxing. Hooray. This is so awesome! This beach will be our secret. Okay, Bartleby? Your dad wants to see you? This beach is sort of empty. Uh, that seems kind of like an insult to the cove she likes, so... Your dad wants to see you? Yeah. Hey, I bet he would like to see this beach. Bartleby, can you go tell him to visit me here? He should see the view! Alright, let's go grab the mayor, I guess. Did you find Mari? The creator cleared the darkness from a hidden beach? Mari wants to see me there. Oh, well, I guess so. I'll see you there, Bartleby. Ah, back and forth. Well, at least thankfully, uh, from the actual village hall, it doesn't feel like as long as a walk, even though it's only like an extra five feet. For some reason. Hi, Dad. You wanted to see me? What a splendid view. A bit empty, though, don't you think? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. The beach needs something natural, though. Mm. Yeah, like a grove of cory trees, which is for some reason tree is. Hmm, that's the wrong plural there. What's a cory tree? <laughs> we had them long ago, but they disappeared over time. I bet there was a page for them in the Book of Life. Bartleby, could you enter the Cory jungle and bring back the Cory tree page? The creator can draw some and we'll, play, we'll plant them here. Alright. So let's, I guess, head over to the Cory jungle. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 13 we'll be doing just that. See you guys then.